Yeah, Anna. Um, I just had two questions about what you were talking about with the e-valve looking at the body. I, I know that that dominant side is lower, but why, why is that? Yeah, I don't, it's the way that I think the musculature develops. And I don't know if it's the lat that's doing it um, because you would think upper trap might be more developed on that side too of the dominance. Yeah. Yeah, I, and it's not because people have a spinal curve either because that's not the case a lot of the time. So I have some homework to do to look that up and find out why that actually happens. But I'm guessing it's lat related. So um, it's strong, so it's pulling the shoulder. I think it's just pulling down lats and lower trapezius being stronger, scapular okay. stabilizers being stronger. So I think that, that it's actually probably the better seated shoulder. <laughs> or the more musculature around it, pulling it in and down a little bit would be my guess. Because but I, I don't know why upper trap doesn't also bunch up. Because I feel like with my dominant, I roll forward a little bit and I see that on people and I'm tight, a little tighter back. So yeah. I feel that my shoulder alignment is awesome on that side. So I would think that would then have you have other dysfunctions that, I don't know, it's just, it was- yeah bizarre to me to think of it that way. So, and then yeah. was the curve of the Achilles telling you if you're weighted on the outer or the inner part of the calcaneus, say this is my right um, Achilles. If it's curved this way, does that mean that I'm more weighted uh, inner? Outside, if that's your right from the back, you're, you're at the back right of it. Back. Yeah, so your head's at the back of it, so that, and that's your right, then that would be outside edge of foot. Because you're going, the uh, calcaneus is rolling that way. It's making it longer by rolling. And so it's making the Achilles go okay. that way. So if it was curved the other way, it would be, yeah. Yeah, okay. and you would think the way, other way to see that is medial malleolus dropping inside, right? Mm -hmm. So that usually if they're going into pronation or flattening, or inside edge of calcaneus, the medial malleolus is dropping inside. Okay. So the ankle bone dropping towards the middle. Thank yeah. you. It's just- Yeah, you're welcome. Putting those pieces together is- Yeah, like yeah, no, it's great. Puzzle. Yeah. It is a brain puzzle. It's always a brain puzzle. And I love that you're thinking that way because that's it. It's gathering information and then putting the pieces together. And honestly, if you don't know the answers and you have, see something and you've written good notes, it's easy for someone else to come in or for you to share it with me and for me to go, oh, but have you thought about this? Or, this is what we do a lot with the PTs. Uh, when we talk, when I talk to Laura, for example, about something like, what did, what did you see there? And what did you do about it? You know, and what do you think that was? Right. So we can, that's what we're trying to create here is just a way to share. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. So here are some of the questions that I got um, that I wanted to answer for all of you. I think they're good questions. So Kim asked a bunch of questions more about logistics stuff. So I'm gonna try and give you the answers we have for now, which might change a little bit. But she was saying, what if the client comes and says, what if I want to cancel? Or says to you as you're making that initial visit, what, what if I want to cancel? And so if they wanna cancel, you're not obligated to continue for another month, right? You can cancel before your month renews and that would be fine. But we're trying to have them do a month, commit to a month to just see, because I think that we can really move them in the right direction in a month. And if they really don't feel like it's the right thing for them after that, they can cancel. If there's more problem, like they think, well, I, what if I want to cancel after two weeks? You say, well, then, you know, we talk to each person one at a time. And if there's a situation that arises that makes you want to cancel before the month, then we'll definitely just talk to you about it and figure out a solution. So, and that's off your hands. You don't need to answer that more than that. Tiziano and I and Silvana will take care of that. More likely I will, yeah. So then we have the question, what if I want to put my membership on hold? So in the past, we've had a lot of trouble with people putting just the monthly group class membership on hold for a week while they go on vacation the way that the pricing works out for the number of classes, if they were to pay per class, usually it ends up being more expensive, even if they're only there for a week and a half, depending on how many classes they're taking. So we, what we usually say is we don't really put those memberships on hold. We, um, for those, so for the basic memberships, um, 
then we really don't put them on hold. You're welcome to, it's easier if you just cancel it and restart it when you're ready, then have you, then have us try and hold it for a period of time. So, but now that we have PT and the Pilates privates included in that, if they want to put it on hold because they're going to be away or somebody's having surgery or something like that, I think we're just going to have to do it on a one-on-one -on -one basis for now. So you could just refer them and say, you know, why don't, here's Zaina's email. Why don't you email her? Here's Tiziano's email, email him. They're going to help you through this and figure out what's best. We don't want them to lose money, but then at the same time, we also don't want them to go on vacation for a week and say, I'm only going to pay three out of the four weeks. Right. And, and it gets really hard on the accounting and really confusing. Um, so we will just do it on a one-on-one -on -one basis and figure out what's best. Um, and then the other question is, what if I want to change my membership level? Um, so the answer to that is we, we can make it, the adjustment anytime we need. And we, we're expecting that we're going to make the adjustment to different levels. In fact, we want you to get to our most basic levels where you're paying the least. Usually we do it uh, when your month ends and to the next month. So usually we do it at one month at a time. But if we need to upgrade, for example, if we decide that you need to see a physical therapist, we can just upgrade the whole plan at that point. If we need to downgrade earlier than we thought, then we'll figure out how to do that also. But typically they can finish out that month and then we can downgrade for the next month. So that we don't, we, we're going to try and keep it on a month to month. I, I know it's not always going to be successful, but we're going to, that would be the easiest accounting wise for us. Um, and then the other question is, what if I want to take a class or do a private first and pay for those? And then if I decide to join, can I use that money that I've already spent to be applied to my membership? So the answer to that is yes, we're, we're happy to apply the cost of the monthly membership after the first session, but only after the first session. Not that you come in for five sessions and then you want to apply that to the next two months of your monthly memberships because it you know, exceeds the cost that you would have paid. So uh, the other question or version of the same question is, well, what if I don't want to commit to a membership and I just want to come in and do an eval? If they're doing a Pilates intake, it's still going to be 95 for that intake. So you can say, that's absolutely fine. You can come in, just do the Pilates intake. If you decide not to do a monthly membership, you just pay for that one session. For the PT, it's, um, for the Pilates, it's 95. For a PT, it's 250 for the eval. So you're welcome to just pay for that and then go on your merry way. It, it's also, that would also work for people who I, I have some clients that would just come in once a month for one PT visit and they were doing their home program on their own. They're just gonna pay that one-off visit, that's fine. And then if somebody pays that one-off visit and then goes home and thinks about it and calls and says, you know what, I really think I do need to go into a monthly program, we can apply that. 95 that they already paid towards one of the monthly memberships. So that's fine, but not after they've done a bunch of stuff and apply all that money. Um, if they want to take time to think about it and just pay for the one session, that's fine. And then her other question was, what if you don't, I, you don't offer classes when I need them? So my answer to that is we have a growing class library and all those classes are available all the time. So you can take any of the classes anytime you want. And then also let them know <clears throat> we're constantly taking requests for class days and times and we're happy to consider making a class when it suits you if you can give us the days and times that would work for you we're always looking to improve our schedule so let us know and we'll work towards that with you and also if you have other people who might be interested in a class maybe we could construct a class around that all we need is three people to start a class at a time that if we can keep that class full with three people or more so that would be the answer to that. All right. And then another question unrelated was related more to the interview is how do you determine how much pain somebody is in? So the easiest way is to use that pain scale that I mentioned earlier, that zero to 10 scale where zero is no pain, 10 is the most pain you can imagine. Where would you say that you fall on that scale? And it's super subjective. So somebody, two people could have the same amount of pain. One person could call it a three, one like Anna. One person could call it um, a 10, like Inaya, my daughter, right? So uh, it's, but that's okay that it's subjective because what we want to do is refer back to that pain level. It's the person's perceived pain. So we want to write down, Anna has three out of 10 pain today. And the next time she comes in, hopefully it's not more than three out of 10, or maybe it's going down over time. And that would be ideal. 
So that we just want to take take note of that. If they perceive themselves to be in more than three out of 10 pain, again, I really recommend trying to have them see a, a physical therapist just to make sure that we're not going to miss something. And then um, <clears throat> you, uh, let's see, what else did I say? Okay, if, if, they, if you suggest going to a PT, I think I already mentioned this, but if you suggest going to a PT and they don't want to go to a PT, uh, I would just maybe don't worry about it. And then maybe eventually move them into that highest level of Pilates track that has the once a month PT check-in if they would go for that. Okay, and then how do we know which track to put somebody on. Um, I wrote a little summary here. I won't bore you with reading it. I'll just send it to you guys. But um, I put staying strong. It, they really is which are most basic is a monthly membership, one time a month private, one complimentary massage. They're not really complaining of symptoms. This is our maintenance level program. They should be able to have good form and modify exercises on their own, right? Staying strong plus is the same thing, plus one private a week. Again, still no real pain, wants more one-on-one -on -one guidance. Somebody who might need it or want it, they're a maintenance program with more guidance, right? They're maybe unsure, they're maybe uncoordinated, they're maybe not athletic, that would be that. Building Strong is a monthly membership with twice a week Pilates private and once a month massage. This They might not be doing much in terms of group classes because they're too afraid to, don't feel like it. They need hands-on, more hands-on. That's why they're in here twice a week. And um, they have a history of pain or problems. And then rebuilding is a monthly membership twice a week. Pilates private, one monthly massage, one PT visit. Again, they're not doing much in group classes. They need more guidance. They need hands-on. And they have a history of problems or pain that needs the help of a PT. Uh, they're recovering from an illness. They may need occasional manual work. They have an underlying chronic condition like scoliosis, fibromyalgia, chronic pain, hypermobility, or a long history of pain and symptoms. So I'm going to send you all these, all the QAs. I'll send you, um, Tatiana is going to save this video as well and send you the little samples I did with him. <laughs> where you guys, He said, it's funny, you'll get a good laugh, but you'll get an idea. So you have something to refer back to. So thank you guys for hanging in there. I won't keep you any longer.